Welcome to the Wally Show Aftercast. Some of the stuff we did not get to during the course of the show today, including some stuff that didn't even remotely make the show. It was all stuff happening off the air. I was driving oh Betty Rock crazy all day long because Betty Rock has been trying to give me advice on how to handle things more constructively for years. Uh, and then Pastor Chad comes in and says something, and I'm like, dude, that's in genius. Thank you. That that matters to me. I hear you. I receive that. I'm going to put this into action. And she's just like, I've been saying this for years. <laughs> well, it's so true because yeah. you were giving him all the credit. I know. He just said it a different way. I know. And it just landed. It connected. I, I, he's just so good at this job. I, I honestly <laughs> I can't. I, I would like to give an update, though. Like I know earlier this week, Wally started talking about some things that were perturbing. Yeah. In him. a meeting we were having that I I wasn't looking forward to. Yes. And it and it actually, the meeting turned out well, yeah. which I did the I told you so dance afterwards mm-hmm. because um, Wally's learning um, through my help. Yes. That he and can, Chad. Pastor and Chad. He can jump to conclusions. He can create drama where there is no drama. And uh, it can actually turn out well as long as we institute healthy communication. I remember Chad was telling me oh, that. Oh, stop it. <laughs> so anyways, um turns out that Wally had a conversation with the person that he needed to have a conversation with. He actually started the conversation, which I was super proud of him for. I even gave him a super well job yep. sticker yep. for doing such a great job. Hashtag growth. Um, and you have to admit that it went really well. It did. It did. And you're glad you did it. And I feel better. I, I feel better. Now, mm-hmm. I will say this caveat. Uh, you ta- you telling me, hey, it'd probably be a good idea. Like maybe if you just apologize for your tone or whatever. And, and that would go a long way to helping mend a situation. Which I did to to my credit. I actually <laughs> to uh, my credit. I know not to brag, but uh, I actually did uh, apologize for my tone and what I had and how I had said what I had said. Um, and at, at that point, I'm waiting for this other person though to go. You know what? I appreciate that, and uh, I'm sorry too, man. Like uh, like I got a little heated too. That didn't happen. But you're not and supposed that to. You're, yeah, but you're not supposed to apologize just so you can get an apology from the other person. I know you're not supposed to, but it really helps. That you, well, you shouldn't have even apologized. If you don't mean it, I probably shouldn't. Uh, and 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 that's you telling like. Oh, so that's me. Chad's advice was okay. great, but like you, you, uh, your I advice see. was horrible. And honestly, <laughs> I don't know if that person should have apologized yes. because yes, while he did use a tone with yes. you, is what you have made it sound like. And you've accused you, me of using a tone. You probably came oh, at uh, him full throttle, guns blazing. First, yes, I did. Absolutely. And so that would make anyone. Uh, be put, on the defensive. Yes. Yeah, and that's true. And All that's tone. true. All that's true. Yeah, I, I own my part of that. I own my part of that. <laughs> uh, but at, at some point in time, just the human side of you, if someone has apologized, like if some, if somebody has wronged me and they apologize to me, I typically, even though as as, as harsh as everybody thinks I can be, I ex, I extend forgiveness pretty gracefully and i and i would be which like, is what he did for you well no I, I would be like i'm totally sorry for my part of that too like totally like i've done that i had i mean i had a big problem with the guy i worked with for eight years and uh and that was a big problem. Like we had, we had, we couldn't hear each, stand to hear each other breathe. Yeah, but I would say that probably in situations that you've been in where someone mm-hmm. needed to apologize, yeah. you've always been where you did need to apologize as well because yeah. you did have a part of it. Absolutely, and I and I called my old, my friend, my old partner. I made the first step because we ended so badly. And I called him and I said, look, I said, uh, this is horrible the way we ended. I'm so sorry for my part in this. I understand the situation better now. And I am... It- a hundred percent culpable, you know, in this. And then he was like, "Yeah, dude, I'm sorry too." You know, it was mm-hmm. it was just a rough time in in mm-hmm. our in our careers, and and so like like that felt really good, you know. Mm-hmm. And so I'm just gonna have to. And I've been in a good mood today. Like I'm like <laughs> because I do feel good. Like I'm like all right, things You're, are. You feel lighter. Well, things are are right again. And 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 we had a good conversation. This guy and I had a really good conversation about other things as well. And it really made me see that. The position that I'm in here and that the show is in here is not in jeopardy and that that they're happy with things like I haven't burned these bridges because you always accuse me of burning a lot of bridges. Mm -hmm. Um, And so, like, for me, that was good to see that I haven't burned a bunch of bridges, you know, and that that we're all good and we're Mm -hmm. safe because I really cared about you in this, uh, Betty. And like, really? Yeah, this was all for you. I was trying to protect you Ah. and make sure that you didn't get fired. Uh, Uh, So, yeah. okay. Yeah, I know. And I'll take this. 
interesting. I'll take the arrow for you. But that's wow, because I did so much wrong. Yeah, okay. I'm not going to take a bullet for you, but I'll take an arrow for you. <laughs> oh <my laughs> uh, but anyway, yeah. So I, I I feel much better. But not, in all seriousness, uh, like I've been giving you a hard time today and, and praising Chad just because it drives you crazy. But I really do. I like I appreciate I appreciate your friendship and I appreciate like our relationship in that. It's grown to the point where you feel strong enough to say what you think I need to hear, even if you know I'm not going to like it. Mm -hmm. And I'm at a point where I can listen to that from you now. There there was a point probably years ago I probably wouldn't uh, Mm -hmm. have have appreciated, honestly. Mm -hmm. Uh, And so, like, it's a testament to who you are as a person. And I can appreciate that and go, all right, I need to look at this. And so, thank you. But you appreciate it internally and then give the credit to Chad. Because he's amazing. <laughs> like, and he's a pastor, you know? I mean, come on. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> but thank you for that. Okay, uh, let's get into some of the other stuff we didn't talk about today. Did you guys see the note or the story that Disney is closing the Galactic Star Cruiser experience? Isn't that oh, what your daughter really? was working? That's what Haley no worked way. at. Yeah, she did the Disney College program. So what it was, was it, it was a two-night hotel stay, completely immersive. Like, you load and you dock. And they had all these terms, like you weren't you know, checking into a hotel, you were going to the loading bay and you were theoretically up in space. And uh, all the people that worked there, everyone was in on it and everyone was had a backstory and they had to stay in character. And like they would say things like you would say, like Chick-fil-A when they say, you know, uh, my pleasure, my pleasure, theirs was my honor. And they would do this, oh, this thing cool. with their hands. Oh, oh, it was so wow. great. Uh, so everyone's oh. in it. They had bands that played like the Katina type things from Star Wars. Mm. It was super stylized, and it was weird because you would pay for a family of four for two nights six thousand dollars to stay there, and Mm, so a lot of money. Yeah, and so my daughter worked there, and she enjoyed it. She loved her time there, um, but they just announced that they're closing it because their bookings had been falling off. It's kind of like one of those things that the super uber fans did it right out of the gate, but once you get through all of them. Where do you go? Like, what an average family of four isn't going to spend six thousand dollars for this experience, you know, for two nights. Mm. They're going to do other things, sure. you know, go on a Disney cruise or you know, stay at the the hotel for you know a, an entire week for that, you know. Um, and because so, some cruises are probably cheaper than oh yeah that hotel. Oh easily. yeah, and so it was sad that this was uh, closing though. Um, but they look at it, they say it's a pre- premium boutique experience. It gave us the opportunity to try things on a smaller scale because it only had a hundred rooms. Uh, And so they're looking at like what they'll do in the future for this kind of stuff. But it's weird, though, too, because their college program, which is what Haley was in, Mm -hmm. um, that's where they put a giant chunk of the college kids went to this program. And so now they're closing that down. So they're going to have to put them in other places Mm -hmm. or in their college experience. I'm pretty sure they'll just find other places for them. Yeah, there's enough. Did it say why they closed it down? I think it's demand. Like there's, there's not, not enough demand. Enough demand. Stop well, their because rooms. it's so right. expensive. That's right? why. Yeah, absolutely. So that's ridiculous. Why. I wonder if there was a way to make it cheaper. But see, that's the problem. Like I think that I what I would have done, but you would have probably ma- made the people mad that spent the money in the beginning sure. of it. Is maybe change the parameters of it and make it more affordable. Maybe make it a little less interactive and just make it a cool thing. And then you can say to the people, "Well, you got the full experience. Now we've downgraded yeah. it." And because I'd know, still be happy spending a good chunk of money, but staying at like a Star Wars inspired hotel. Right, exactly. Like, it's not like you would need this yeah, you would love master that. experience, but if it was just a, an actual vibe, then that would be a little bit more fun. Vibe, guys, Get this. It's like, had to use it. Had to use it. The <laughs> Star Wars, uh, where you go and build a lightsaber, like the lightsabers are kind of cool, yeah. and you can spend money to go build one. And so it ends up being about $300 for a lightsaber that you build. Expensive. Yeah. And so my brother in law did this for his kid that loves Star Wars. So they go, and I'm like, wow, that's a Amazing, and so they got two of them, so six hundred bucks. Yikes! Uh, and I'm oh. like, that's amazing. Was the experience great? And he was like, it was fifteen minutes. <gasps> yeah, no. yeah. Some like, of that stuff is legit. built up in your mind that you're going to be working on this lightsaber yeah. for hours. hours on end, uh-huh. and you're going to, you know, be so fulfilled. Yeah. But then you just walk away with something that. There's probably kids out there who love their Walmart plastic yeah. lightsaber just as much. 15 wow. minutes is how long it took to build that. Man, so. that's Holy a bummer. Cow. It, there's a lot of news coming out of Disney, too. They were planning a $1 billion um, facility in Lake Nona for like Imagineers and stuff. And the whole fight with DeSantis, they pulled out of that. And because DeSantis is the governor of Florida, and he went after Disney for them getting into the, um, well, the, what's been called the Don't Say Gay ban, which is so misleading because it's like, oh, you hate gay people. 
people know what they're trying to do is like keep like trans and gay agendas out of kids in third grade you know like and I support that I think it's lunacy but then it gets it just gets morphed into well you just hate gay people and so mm-hmm. that's what it became because Disney then wasn't going to support it, but then they came out and supported it because they have so many people that are uh, LGBTQ that work there. They had pressure to support it. And so now it's a big fight uh, and it's gotten uber political. And it's I'm curious to see if this is going to help or hurt DeSantis because he announced that he's going to run for president. He'll make the announcement next week. And he is not doing well in the polls. Trump is beating him in the polls like oh, of boy. this. And Trump is in a lot of trouble. But I just I sit back and I just I'm just marveling at we have an entire country full of Republicans and an entire government full of Republicans and they cannot find one person that is normal like a moderate you know that that believes in you know uh, you know the Republican values and like even Christian values but then is not so extreme and alienating to everybody. Mm-hmm. You know, like I just I cannot fathom that that person doesn't exist, you know, in in mm-hmm. this country and that we're going to go we we're going to have the option in our party cuz I'm a Republican. We're going to have the option in our party of two extremes. Mm-hmm. Uh and I, it's, it's it's just mind-boggling to me. You know, and then you have Nikki Haley but she has zero traction. And I think that there's a lot of good with her. She was the former uh South Carolina governor and there are a lot of people that really like her but she just hasn't got she hasn't gotten traction. Mm-hmm. And I I I look I honestly I I truthfully I, I'm so tired of the replication of what we've done between Democratic and Republican and old guys that are just part of the problem. Mm-hmm. I would welcome, I would welcome a female president. You know, it's got to be the right person. They can't just put somebody in that is either a token female or and not female for the sake of female. Exactly. But, you know, but the right person, mm-hmm. a woman of strength, a woman of character. I would love to see how our uh, country looks and how it is differentiated. It mm-hmm. would be fascinating. Fascinating mm-hmm. uh, to me. I mean, it can't be worse than what we've gone through for the last three years. I mean, it can't be. Uh, so let's try that for once. Unless it's Kamala, then I then no. Uh, <laughs> no he's not a fan there because that's lunacy, man. And he like, needs a female Republican. Dude, we have shifted so far. The extremity, the extremities that we are in with our liberal agenda and stuff. It is mind boggling. I was listening to this thing of an argument. Um, in Seattle for a homeless coalition and this lady was on the board and she was like hey I don't think we should have this guy in uh, on the board here for the homeless coalition because uh, he actually has sexual assault charges against him the mod not the moderator the co-chair is yelling at her you can't bring up that stuff here everyone deserves housing she's like he is a sex offender you cannot everyone deserves housing so terrorists deserve housing like it was crazy Mm -hmm. how she went at this lady and and this lady goes, he has actually assaulted me. And they're like, well, you should go to the police. She's like, I have. And you can't bring that up here. This person was so in defense of a person with sexual assault, like literally convictions that like because they're so open minded that everybody deserves everything. And, and it's it's gotten to this point where it's crazy in this world. This has to stop. Now, I'm not saying that when we put that into this, that we swing all the way to the right, because mm-hmm. that's not healthy mm-hmm. either. I think we need to swing a little bit to the middle, and maybe some normal people could run some things around here for mm-hmm. once. Yeah. So I'm I, eventually I'm going to have to run for some sort of office. Oh no! Eventually, there you yes. go. Post no, no. FM. Yeah. yeah. Post FM. Wally. Post FM. That's what I'm going to do, and I got to do this that's before I idea. become a total old man. Uh, <laughs> that's too late then. No, no, no. I still got time. I still got a lot of good years good left in me. I got a new mattress topper. I feel better every day I wake up. So I'm uh, pretty good. Just that oh, fact okay. alone. Yeah. What a great argument for not being. Uh, I got a great mattress topper. Helps the sciatica. (laughs) Uh, Lady Rock, what do you got? Well, Wally went on a rant. Now prepare for me to get on a rant. Oh, yay! Okay. What do you have to bring well, about? Here, I'll tell you what it is. So Priscilla Presley, she oh, is yeah. the she is Elvis Presley's ex wife. Okay. They were married for six years. They had a child together, Lisa Marie Presley. Really? Only six years. She yeah. passed away, and when she passed away, her um, she left to her daughter Riley. She left her the whole estate of Elvis. So that means Graceland. 
Lincoln, like his planes, his mm-hmm. cars. Because like, Elvis had given it to his daughter, money. not his ex-wife. Right. He gave it to Lisa Marie. But when she passed away, she gave it to her daughter. So Riley is Priscilla Presley's granddaughter. OK, mm-hmm. now sources say that Priscilla and Riley got into a little heated dispute because Priscilla wants to be buried next to Elvis Presley oh. on the Graceland grounds. Sure. Why do you think that is? As a fan, why do you think I that think is? I think it's because her identity yeah. is only in her ex-husband, whom she cheated on <laughs> and was married to for six years. Do you know any other ex-wife that wants to be buried next to her ex-husband? I mean, no, it's but Elvis, because though. it's her identity and Elvis. she is not known for anything else, right. that's where she wants to be she buried. She wants that to be the history. History of and her, here's for sure, the, the legacy. Too. Here's the thing, too. He is bookended. He's buried on the Graceland grounds. He is bookended between his parents, his mom and his dad. Then there's uh, Lisa Marie, his daughter, buried in the same area, yep. as well as Elvis's grandson. Okay, that's great. But Priscilla wants them to move one of his parents and uh, have her be right next to him. They would have to exhume the body, which would yes, be weird. Yes, and I say no. Yeah. I say Find a hobby, get a job, yep. and figure out something else because it's not him. What if there was a compromise? I literally just thought what of is, this. What is okay, the compromise? Okay, because I don't think you should exhume his parents and move them. So she passes away. Yeah. The yep. granddaughter okay. then says, okay, here's what we're going to do. We're going to spread your ashes in between them. And then uh-huh. everyone's happy. She technically is there, but there's no headstone. She's just, she just ashes to ashes, dust to dust, and everybody's happy. Huh? Except for Betty. And that's a story that will live uh, like, oh, yeah, they spread her ashes right next to the king. Uh, So she's happy. What do you think? And and then there's no headstone. Okay. We're very. Because I know you'd be nuts about that, and you'd yeah. probably vandalize it. She'd oh, be for forgotten. Sure. Oh, for quicker. sure. Um, I I think I could compromise with okay, that. Good. I could because I would hope that a tornado or a great mighty wind as they poured it out, <laughs> yes, whoosh, and it ends up at a gas station so <laughs> or in somebody's like mouth the, as yes. they're pouring it out. Have you seen those videos? They're like, we're just gonna uh, lay Aunt Bernice here to rest in the ocean. She loved the ocean. Let me just pour her ashes out, and then a gust of wind hits them and. Aunt Bernice it's goes so right bad. in their mouth. It's so bad. That's disgusting. <laughs> yeah. I, I would I think I'd vomit a little. So I could I could okay. I could be okay with that. Now here's here's another thing that's just got me gobsmacked. Reeling. Yes. Yeah. Is that okay, so Riley, the granddaughter denies Priscilla, her grandmother, and says, no, you can't be That's buried. That's pretty like, gutsy to too. Like I don't it know is. that I would tell my grandmother no yep. to things. But Sources claim that she had to pay her own grandmother millions uh, to get her out of her hair. Cash grab. That is ridiculous. Cash grab. And that just goes to show yep. the kind of woman she is, the kind yep. of character she has, that she is a horrible person. Oh, thank you for finishing thank that word. Goodness. I really wasn't sure where that, that was going was so for a scary. second. Ibble. And I yeah. stand by it. Horrible. Yeah. Ibble it was, uh, I was, I've never that been more thankful for Ibble uh, in my life there. So thank you for saying Ibble. <laughs> now she got it. Betty Rock just got it. Oh, horrible. <laughs> well. Uh, so good. Anyways, Anyways, all I have to say, okay, my rant is done. Do you feel better? Yeah, I do. See, I'm telling you, that's what. That's where I live. I live in the rants, <laughs> and they feel so good, and people love them. So anyway, uh, let's do a little birthdays, and if we have any. We do. And then uh, our favorite thing on Friday. Uh, so yesterday, Stephen celebrated a birthday. He said, I've been a potty for a few years now. I love listening to the podcast and aftercast. You guys make the tough days easier. Nice. That's Thank very you. kind. Thank Appreciate you, Stephen. That. And happy birthday. Uh, Rebecca celebrates a birthday today. So happy birthday, Rebecca. Rebecca. Stephen has a question. What is the segment of the show that is the hardest to produce? Oh. Mm. That's an interesting. Yeah, because there's because a lot of the stuff like like I I think it'd be pulling like audio for different things that we do like maybe for like snap judgment. I'm trying to think of the thing that has the most pieces of audio that are, our, are pulled our, and cut. Our most like difficult difficult from like a Interviews? moving oh, pieces. I know what to do. I know what it's to do. when we have to pull songs for a topic. topic so if yeah. it's like oh what's that song that blah, blah, yeah. means a lot to you, and then Betty's usually. 
mm-hmm. pulling clips from YouTube. Wally's got to press a bunch of different buttons. I'm still taking calls in the other room. Like that's right. a chaotic. That hour. one is that's a busy one because yeah because then they have to spend time like he'll be screening calls and then they'll each alter alternate which songs that they're going to cut and load into our system. I'm editing the phone call down and then I have to leave a space in the call on the machine and so when it runs to it when we're running it back I actually hit pause on the machine play the song then I have to let the song play I have to re up to where it starts again hit play and then do that like two or three times in a call and not mess it all up and, and most times I get it right but sometimes yeah. I train wreck it and sometimes mm-hmm. our, like, our touch screen is a little bit off yep. so you know th- 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 those hours result in the most uh, Wally kicking a trash can. I usually moments. train rack it too after I've just been like, man, we are on fire today. What could go wrong? And then <laughs> <laughs> always. So those yeah, are hard. I would say that one. Yeah. I we agree. used to do a segment where Betty Rock had to produce it every week on Total Access, <sighs> and it was the um, oh, really? uh, yeah, it was uh, Wally's Island, mm. and so Ooh. people had to write a story mm. uh, and work the titles of the three songs that they would like to hear on this island, and so she had to call people, and it was a lot mm. of work, and she actually spends a lot of work on our Flashback Friday, getting a hold yeah, of people absolutely. and and pulling songs and stuff, uh, you know, or, or their entries so that we can call them and get a hold of them, and she does a really good job with that too. So there's a lot of work that goes on to this show that people never see all the opens and things like that before segments one of us has cut something there to just address it up a little bit and it all takes time you know and so hopefully hopefully people appreciate that because we truly love doing this and we love the fact that we get to do this mm-hmm. still so uh we can <laughs> It's, it's supposed to rain. Yeah, uh, no. I love rainy Shush. days. I was love like, em. what am I going to do this weekend? And Look forward Betty to it. Rock is like, uh, spend time with your wife. I'm like, uh, maybe. I don't know. Well, uh, you should. I Let's think see. she wants to do stuff together this weekend. Ew. I was hoping to like uh, <laughs> go uh, foiling or or e bike or not e bike uh, motorcycle riding. Um, so maybe one of the days I'll do that, or half of a day. I'll do that yeah, uh, if compromise. the weather permits. Yeah, I mean, it's not that I don't love spending time with my wife. I do love that, but there are certain things I like to do that she does not like to do, and it's good, like rejuvenates me on the weekend. Well, if you're gonna, oh, yeah. So time by yourself doing what you love rejuvenates you, it does. so that you can yeah. spend time with your wife. So I can be better not, for her. Uh, yes, uh, I don't disagree with that. Yeah, because I, I think see. we all need that. Yeah, so I see. Time. What are y'all gonna do together? I don't know. Like we've talked about going to this place in Florence, Alabama, uh, and I'm hoping I'm going to look at the weather and see if it's not raining down there. Um, and so if it's not, we'll go down there and kind of you know antique stuff, and mm. we just like little towns, and we go find places to mm. eat and snack That's and stuff. Fun. And then tonight I'm making uh, my homemade shrimp that she loves. Oh, she does. Oh, she loves it, no, and and I do too. Like thought she did. It, no, we get a bag that's like the medium shrimp, and it's like between forty and Oof. sixty shrimp, and like Oof. by weight, and we eat it all ourselves. Damn. Nice. Like we will eat, we'll eat just shrimp, just shrimp. We won't have any. Sometimes she'll make bread as a side, but that's it. We literally just sit there and eat the shrimp. Is it fried? Yeah. Oh yeah. Oh, I have a that batter that I make and a, a dip that mm-hmm. I make that I like. She uses ketchup, uh, which is a travesty. Um, <laughs> but uh, she, it's like one of her favorite meals, and mm-hmm. so I, I, it's a pain to make because I literally I make them ten at a time in my fryer, mm-hmm. and so I'll bring her in ten, and then I drop the other ten. It's like working a fast food restaurant, mm-hmm. and like. Like, so she gets to eat while because they're mm. only good hot, and so then uh, then I'll put the next eight in or ten in, and I'll run in and I'll have a couple standing up and eat, mm. and then so I don't really get to sit down and eat until the last batch. Why can't you put them all in? I th- it's not big enough. Not mm. Enough space. You need a bigger one, and you have to flip them all by hand. Like each one has to flip. You oh, don't, you geez. can't leave them in, so you have to like hit them with the spatula so they turn over, mm-hmm. uh, or else they're not cooked on both sides. Well, oh, yeah, but it's but it's a great meal. So that's what we're gonna do tonight. Uh, Gavin, okay, I gotta make notes. You do my have wife's a lot of. Ask me. I know you have a lot of rain in Florence, Alabama. No! tomorrow. Like, but low seventies, but then it's yeah storming from. Thank you for checking. Yeah, 4 a.m. to 4 p.m. Oh, so. geez. All right, we're not going to be doing anything. But keep an eye on it. Keep an eye on it because I we have some friends coming into town tonight, and then uh, the guy and I and a couple of friends in town wanted to go golfing tomorrow morning, but like there's just yeah. 98% chance of rain tomorrow, so you I'm just are praying. so into golf. That's good. I hope you stay into it. I, like, I do, too. I have a feeling that like I know that I golf a lot right now, and I know when we try to have a kid at some point in the future, I'll have to whoop. 
pull that back. It, it really does. The I first, know at least the first six months. Exactly. So like, I know that's going to go whoop away <laughs> at some point or another, but I like getting better at it. I like playing it a lot. I haven't played all week. Yeah. It's maybe an addiction. You I don't can, know. You can, here's the deal. Even In the six months, it's all hands on deck. Like You yeah, guys are both totally. just trying to keep your head above water. After that, it starts to get a little easier, and you can go golfing, but you have to give her time to go exactly. do something she wants to uh, like decompress, because it's hard. Like Being well, a mom is being a parent is hard. Being a mom is super hard. I will say, though, that on Instagram, I've been seeing a lot of videos and ads for these like baby strollers with a built-in uh, golf bag thing oh, that goes oh, underneath yeah. it. My nice. So I could, on a good weather day, yeah. just walk the yeah, kid you're putting your and play kid golf. in the vicinity of getting hit in the head by a golf no, ball. No, no, no. It's got like a plastic cover on it. Love it. For the oh. kid to protect him. Love it. That's a great idea. It doesn't, idea. but I think I could make that happen. <laughs> yeah, that's a great idea. That's a real so good idea. That's, wow. that's the plan for the future. I am put that on my baby list. Absolutely. Uh, Lady Rock, what do you got? Uh, let's see. Um, probably going to get together with some friends. We're going to play games. Nice. Um, I do love when you get together with your friends because you guys usually play the Pictionary game. Or uh, Oh, yeah. Um, uh, 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 oh, man. Draw something. Uh, categories? No. no that's it's it. something. Telestrations. Pic- Telestrations. Yeah, when you play that, you always post it on your stories, and it's always fun, yes. to, it's always fun to try and join the game. It's a lot of fun. Uh, so maybe do that. I might go antiquing a little bit. We'll see. Mm-hmm. Um, Florence, Alabama? No. Um, <laughs> and then I'm supposed to meet some friends today for lunch, so that'll be good. And then Sunday is church. Yep. So. Well, there you go. Yeah. Amen. All right. Well, with that, I think we're going to get out of here early today, oh, which yes. is a good day. It's been a long week. When we get back on Monday, Wally will have a doctor's appointment. Oh, <sighs> yeah, to solve his um, whatever Our the issue. weird vein thing is. I got to go at three o'clock in the afternoon. I couldn't get I bet it's earlier. nothing. They're going to be like, have you been playing pickleball a lot? Yeah. Like, I don't yeah. think it's that because, yeah, I don't think it's that. But it, I mean, it did concern me like I'm enough to where I made it a doctor's appointment. Mm-hmm. Like, and I never do that. And so I'm hoping that that was worthwhile. Plus, I can talk about some other stuff, too, that I'm like, hey, would you recommend going to a chiropractor or are they just voodoo doctors? Uh, Because my neck hurts really bad. (laughs) They're totally voodoo doctors. Hey, I I have a doctor that does No, I am not going to your crazy (laughs) non-medical doctor. Gen Z millennial. She's a holistic doctor. I am not doing that nonsense. I would rather take the $60 and light it on fire uh, than go there. I know. Okay, this is you being very dramatic. I'm being very truthful. (laughs) If you said, "Hey, uh, you can go to this doctor and uh, and and get a life saving treatment," uh, but she's holistic, or you could take that uh, sixty dollars and set it on fire right now, and maybe even set yourself on fire. I would do that. Take the risk. So ridiculous! <laughs> oh my gosh! All mm-hmm. right. Well, that's going to do it for your aftercast today. Thanks for being a potty. We'll see you Monday.